I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. It's it's Bill Swirla. It's it's birthday week. It's 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 two presidents having a conversation. It's Alan and Denny. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, 20 years now, pass it on that faith to the next generation. Like our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Get our app. It's available on all major platforms. You can watch HT on your Apple TV and donate. A tax-deductible gift to higherthings.org keeps us get filling the ears of the kids with the gospel. And they need that in these dark times. Bill Swirla is one of my mentors. He is... Um, he is... Uh, the, the president emeritus of higher things and pastor at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Hacienda Heights, California, presently locked down <laughs> by his governor. Pastor Swirla, well, how you doing? <laughs> yes, I'm I'm a prisoner in my own house, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Just I'm, you and I'm the doing, cats, I'm right? You cats and the wife, uh, huh? right? You, the cats yeah. and the wife. Do they lock them you know, down too? The, the you know the the difference between you and me, George, is you, you're you're the mega extrovert, and I'm I'm the mega introvert. See, uh, remember those days when we used to we used to do the meet and greet? You know, you'd go around meeting people, trying to raise money, get to know people. I learned just to kind of like tag on tag along with you, and that way I didn't have to say anything. I just kind of nod my head, you know, and and you, we just kind of went like a team, just yes. one 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 to the next. Because if you left me alone, I would just kind of corner with somebody in a conversation for two and a half hours, and that would be the end of it. But well, but this this COVID thing, you know, it's this is for introverts. This is we we've been doing this for decades, George. You know, and so look, I'm off the hook for Thanksgiving. I'm off the hook for Christmas. I'm off the hook for most everything, and you know, I'm I'm kind of enjoying it. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, good. what am I gonna do? What are we gonna do? We gotta have people. All right, I know. Hey. So I remember church. one time uh, there were four of us driving to um I were driving to some place in southern Michigan. It was the winter, remember that? Four of us in the car. And and it was snowy and everything. And you're in you're in the car and you're with three other people and you're saying, I need people, I need people, I need people. <laughs> that's that's how crazy this is, you know. And I I'm I'm thinking too many people, too close here, it's too close. I'm I, you know, so yeah. There we are. All right, so we turned 20. Okay. The big 2-0. Oh, one year for being adults in higher things. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get out of the picture, and the question is, Pastor Swirla, what does higher things mean to you? What does it mean to me? Okay. All right. Higher things, first of all, I, uh, higher things will always have a very fond place in my heart. Uh, and in my ministry, I'm, I'm in. I'm going into the 29th year of ministry, and um, higher things kind of stands out as one of those extracurricular activities that all most of us pastors do. We all do something on the side. Some of us do synodical service. Uh, some of us serve in the district. Some of us are circuit visitors or things like that. Uh, higher things has always has was for a long period of time my extracurricular. Um, and I learned tons from that. I, and, and it's everything from like the really boring stuff, like board governance, you know, I, you know, nobody wants to hear about that, but, you know, I learned how boards worked, uh, in, in a way that I never thought about before. But I think most importantly here is I learned youth work because I always thought that youth work was, it was kind of a subdivision of ministry, you know, it was for, uh, really young, energetic people, people like jacked up on Mountain Dew like you are, you know, and and uh, and I realized that yeah, the template for higher things was um, a an approach to youth ministry that respected the youth as uh, thinking young adults, as worshiping young adults, as, um, you know, fellow saints uh, in the body of Christ. And, and it was much more of a I don't know, it's much more pure than it was uh, adults trying to act like kids or, uh, you know, trying to bring everything down to a certain youth level. It it kind of worked around this youth subculture thing and really treated the church as as, as a family. 
And, uh, and I really appreciate that. I learned an awful lot about talking in front of large groups of kids, leading worship. Um, and so, you know, it, it just gave me a different, different way of looking at, at youth ministry, that it really wasn't youth ministry. It was ministry to younger adults. It also gave me a, a kind of a template for um, how the faith is handed on. And, and I've used this, you know, when, back when I was president, too, that we are running a, a race, a relay race, and we're handing on this, this baton, this tradition. And, uh, you know, before you do the handoff, you got to run together for a while. you got to be in step with each other. And I think Higher Things strives to do that. It strives uh, to have um, older, older adults and young adults running in step with each other uh, in the way of faith and then handing on that tradition so that they can run their lap uh, when it's their turn. And, uh, you know, their turn comes quicker than you realize. So higher things means an awful lot to me. It, it, it really uh, shaped a lot of my ministry, especially in the 2000s, the early 2000s. I stole, and I still say, the stuff that, they will, that you, you used to say that you will run farther and faster with this faith and when when the baton gets handed that you'll run farther and faster than we have run. I thought that was, I'm going to get a little frosty. I'll get a little, get a little ENFP emotional here. I I always, I always, I always did at the end of conferences, you know, when you do the big farewell and you know, your voice gets a little quivery there and, and, uh, and, you know, you have this sense that, uh, you know, my prayer has always been that they do a better job with it than we did. Um, you know, and I think every generation needs to think that way. You, you can't say, you know, oh, we were great. And the, the rising generation, you know, they don't have what it takes. They do have what it takes and they have the gifts of the spirit. And I, I sincerely pray that, that they, they, they run a good, they run a good lap. Yeah, you know, right. I'm tired. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> but it, right. It's kind of right. nice, nice to see the end of your lap and, and know that there are there are young people who love the liturgy, love the hymnody. Um, they're creative with their faith. They're expressive. Um, they want to learn more. They want to learn things more deeply. Um, they're curious about you know the spiritual life and about prayer and about the scriptures. And and that's very gratifying because you know it, you you know that the race continues. Favorite HT memory? One that I can talk about. <laughs> favorite HT memory. I, you know, I have a lot of them. Some are silly, like uh, Lemker with his golf carts, you know, golf cart races, uh, golf cart spin outs, golf cart accidents. Um, Kristen Sanchez with her uncontrollable giggles over popcorn and other silly things. That, that, you know, I don't know why I remember that, but I, I remember those things. I think my favorite, favorite sort of serious memory or memory that's, that's more of the way of what Higher Things is about is I did, a key, I did one of the plenaries, and I forgot what it was, but I remember um, ending the one session, and, and I, was, I think it was, it was doing it on, on the cross of Christ or the crucifixion. I, I don't remember the topic. It's all kind of blurry. But um, I ended with a, a hymn. I always like to have singing at the end of, of, uh, of big talks. I do this all over. I, I've done this at Good Shepherd Institute. I've done it wherever I, wherever I give talks. I like to have the acapella singing. I don't know where I got that from. I think I got that from Chuck Swindoll. He used to always do that at the end of his sermons, but, but yeah, seriously. But anyway, but this thing ended with stricken, oh. smitten and afflicted. And, um, it's, it was, it was, it was a very, uh, I think kind of intense hour on the crucifixion and and its meaning and its theology and everything and then we we just kind of closed with with circumspect and afflicted and everybody just spontaneously stood up and and this room full of kids singing this very powerful good friday hymn you know it was the, that's that's probably my absolute favorite moment um is as a speaker for higher things mine was uh from of you was uh was when you had a whole conference confessing. It was Quorum Day. Oh, I think it was 20, 2011. Oh, yeah. You had a whole conference and they, and, and they were like little soldiers and they were, they were saying the Latin, uh, Quorum Deo, Quorum Hamidibus, before God, before each other. And yeah. chicks, uh, as, you, as you've oft, oft, often taught me, chicks did the Latin. 
They dig the Latin. <laughs> they do. That's how I got my wife. You know, she dig Latin. So, yeah, that was a fun. That was a fun moment. And I, I still meet people periodically that will greet me. That they go, "Coram Deo, Coram Omnibus." You know, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, something, some things just stick. Uh, that's a good one to stick. If they know? can do so, calculus, so, if they can do uh, higher math, they can do some some hard theology. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, kids Absolutely. Can. You know, I mean, it, it's in a way, theology is a, yeah, they used to call it the queen of the sciences. I'm not sure it's really, quali it really qualifies as a science, but it is a way of knowing. And it has a language and it has a, a very deep pool of knowledge and, and whatnot. So it, it's a, it's, it's not only approachable by anybody, but it's, it's, it's almost infinite in what you, the depths you can plumb, just like, you know, you can learn algebra, you can learn calculus, you can learn all kinds of higher math that I never learned. So, yeah. So, so when you became president, when I became president, great organization, kind of against my will, you know, I was, yeah, like, I remember I, never, I was on the phone I with you to be president. Then all yeah. of a sudden I got to be president. You're, so. you're, 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 you're the vice president who didn't want to be the vice president. Did we elect no. Kuhlman one year as 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 vice president while he was saying no? I, yeah. I remember that. So we, we have we have like you know just like Saint Augustine was ordained against his will. We have done this on occasion. You know, just kind of people say no, I'm not not going to do it. All in favor, I, you know. Then you're in. So okay, I'll never forget say? that Kuhlman saying no, no, as he's being elected <laughs> vice president. No, no, I don't want this. So when you became president of of higher things. Um, uh, what was your what, what was your sort of um, uh, what was your hope for the for the organization? I think I, it, speaking organ, you know, when you're president, president is a strange thing. Is and I don't like I don't like being I did never like being president. I think you like being president more than I like being president. I don't like to be center stage and in the limelight. I'm a background person. You know, it's the extrovert introvert thing. Um, I really like to be at the level of advisor or um, I much prefer to write than to speak um, because because I can work it out and then I don't have to put up with, you know, people read it, they can agree, they can disagree, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I don't really take to these these roles. I'm given them a lot. I think people think I'm good at it and I'm not really, but um, I don't like to be in the limelight. And it, it's just, it, it's, too, it, it makes me crazy. But um, being the president of Higher Things for me was more of an organizational thing. And, you know, we were kind of as an organization going from something that had just started up like a startup company, you know, where you're kind of doing your thing, you and your buddy in the garage and, and stuff. And, and we were, we we're kind of emerging into a period where, where we needed to have some some organization if this was going to go on year after year after year. And so my goal or my hope was to uh, guide the organization into um, a kind of a, a structure that could be handed on and carried on long after I was gone, you were gone, and uh, that would include and involve new people and, and would have, it would have a, a, an organizational life of its own that was sustainable. And, you know, and it, it, it's very gratifying. Uh, I forgot how many years it's been since I've actually held any position with higher things. I've done conferences and have led worship and things like that. But um, it's nice to see where it's gone and how it's grown. I don't take credit for it, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that the, the organization, and it's even kind of weathered. I don't know how you've done with COVID, but uh, you were present, you, you know, you did things and you, you even had like virtual conferences, right. which, um, you know, a lot of people just canceling everything under the sun and, and, and uh, the, the organization's nimble enough, flexible enough to basically say, oh, can't have a conference. We'll do it this way. And so you, uh, so you moved us from the garage to a virtual office is what I think happened. Um, I think that's. What? You, you you got us out of the garage because we were we were playing we were playing the instruments in the garage and then and 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 the next thing you know we were and so that 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 I think is um um and and I I I know that you knew that that we probably couldn't have sustained anything without a conference and the fact that they were nimble enough to get the con uh, the uh, the staff was nimble enough to have a virtual conference is sort of 
Um, I got one last question for you since we're short on time. What do you think the impact of higher things has been on uh, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, the church as a whole, um, and is there still a need for it? I think I think the impact has been significant. Um, it's never going to replace, uh, you know, synodical activity, the district or the synodical youth programs. But I think that over the years, and I've noticed this just in the conversation, that people have taken note. Uh, that that youth are not necessarily drawn to you know um, certain kinds of music or certain ways of presenting the faith or something that that um, that liturgical worship and and scriptural catechetical teaching and serious teaching theology uh, rather than just kind of you know the problem problem of being a teenager that this has an appeal to a lot of kids and so I think it's up the game. Uh, overall, even if, if people don't go to a conference or not necessarily think higher things supportive, I think it's kind of up the game overall and reminded everybody that um, teenagers are really young adults. And, and to treat them as young adults, you'll be surprised uh, what they're capable of, of learning. And, and you'd, be surprised, you'd be surprised what you can learn from them, too. When you when you meet them as young adults rather than than talk down to them uh, as adolescents or whatever you want to call them, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's had an impact. Pastor Bill Swirla, President Emeritus of Higher Things, my dear friend and mentor. It's good to see you, my friend, alive and well in the Republic of California. The People's Republic of California. <laughs> Pray for us, George. We're, we're held hostage here, but uh, <laughs> presumably it's for the good. Presumably for, it's for the for greater the good. good. Thank yeah. you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Happy birthday, HT. Glad to talk to Pastor Swirl about all the things that are going on. And we'll see you tomorrow. Daring to be Lutheran and having a blast while we do it. 